So anyway, here we are. <laughs> Come here, baby. Good bird. So, hey everybody, Gardner here and Lila. And we are going to be just making a video today that talks about Lila. And this is a different video, um, not something I've normally made on this channel. And the reason for that is because I have now been with Lila for two months. And I wanted to make a video on whether or not owning a parrot is a good idea for you. This is gonna come down to one major point, so I'll go ahead and make that. It depends on the bird. Lila is a lilac crowned Amazon. Can you say lilac crowned Amazon? She doesn't know how to say that yet. Lilac crowned Amazons, and Amazons in general, aren't known for being very cuddly birds. They aren't known for being very friendly. They don't like to be held or touched or be with somebody. This sweet, sweet baby loves to be touched. Yeah, so it depends on the bird. Dog owners who own pit bulls would say the same thing too. However, comma, they do possess a lot of strength. The same thing can be said for Amazons. This beak right here can do some damage if it wants to. Lila is a sweetheart and she doesn't want to bite me and draw blood and she just wants her beak to be rubbed and nuzzled. Lila loves her beak to be rubbed and nuzzled. That's one of her favorite places to be touched. Some birds friggin' hate that. Now let's go to the relationship that Lila and I have. I've never felt this close to an animal before. Um, I feel like I can read her body language really well and I feel like I can understand what she's saying. She has specific noises that she uses for certain things and I've begun to understand what she needs and wants based on both her body language and her actual auditory language, which is a really interesting thing about birds. There, there's that actual auditory cueing that can be done between a human and a bird. Birds require a lot of patience and Lila herself required a lot of patience in order for me to get to the point where I could touch her. I would say it was a good three or four weeks before I touched Lila without her running away. As a bird, she's an avoidance kind of um, personality. She doesn't bite or lunge. She'll just avoid your hand if she doesn't want to do something. For instance, if she's on one side of a perch and I go to, to pet her, um, and she doesn't want to be pet, she won't lunge at my hand. She'll actually just kind of very calmly step away. And that's my cue to know, oh, not right now, which is handy because it allows me to keep my fingers intact. And it also allows Lila the option to move instead of bite. She's learned that moving is more effective than biting, which is awesome. So the first time I touched her was actually an accident. She was on my shoulder and I went to prevent her from hurting herself and I just managed to get my head on top of her hand on top of her head and I started to stroke the back of her neck when I realized I was close enough to do so and she was just fine with that. So the first time I touched her, other than her being on my arm or on my shoulder, was about four weeks into our relationship and I was able to just come up to her and go like this. Can I show? Can I show everybody? Is that okay right now? Is that okay for me to touch? That was a yes. So reading body language. I can say beyond a doubt that I don't regret in, in terms of going through the adoption process with Papiago, in terms of adopting Lila herself, um, in, in terms of moving her into the correct room. I mean, it's all just been fine. Um, I'm past the honeymoon phase for sure. Uh, there are certain behaviors that she exhibits that I'm just like, okay, we need to work on this. This has got to stop. So it's, it's not like I'm in the honeymoon phase still where I'm like, oh, everything you do is great. And she's definitely past her honeymoon phase of respecting my space because she will uh, annoy me to get what she wants until she gets what she wants. Which is another thing that's interesting about birds. Uh, they're pretty much two-year-olds with wings and, and they have the mentality and, and mindset of they're basically incapable of doing anything wrong um, and they just they just want what they want and they want to they want to do what they want when they want but Again, there are ways to tell a bird eh, Maybe not right now. There's that there's that positive reinforcement that has to go into almost every Intentional movement and so that brings me to my next point is do you have the time and patience? To work with a bird because working with a bird requires a lot of patience. It requires an investment of time um, I spend four or more hours a day, just me and Lila. And I'm able to do that because I don't have any kids and my wife works a day job and I work an evening job. So I'm with Lila from about 8 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. At which point, hey, hey, please stop biting my moles. Those are part of my skin. 
Where was I? At 3.30 p.m., I put Lila in her cage and I go to work and Caroline gets home around 4 and then she hangs out with Lila for a good couple hours until I get home from work and then we put Lila to bed together. So every day, this sweet bird gets to hang out with two awesome humans. So this bird gets a lot of interaction one-on-one -on -one with multiple people. That's really important about socializing your bird and to making sure that they understand that not just my hands are good, but Caroline's hands are good, other people's hands are good. And that's really the next thing you have to consider is do you have the support from your community to own a bird? Because if my wife wasn't behind the decision for me to own a bird in the first place, I never would have gone through the process. It, it is not a one person job, it can be. But if you live with somebody, a roommate, a significant other, if you're married, um, if you have a domestic partner, whatever that is, anybody living with you is going to have to understand that there is a responsibility from them to help out, to help out with the bird a bit. Um, it's, it's just not something... What's on the wall over there, Lila? Is that a wasp or is that a spider? There's a mystery bug over here. Let's go check it out. This is something that the bird helps me a lot with. I don't think it's anything dangerous. I don't think it's anything dangerous. So that's something that the bird helps me out a lot with. I used to have a terrifying fear of wasps and I really don't anymore. Um, it's kind of, she's kind of giving me this weird amount of confidence about just living. Um, I don't really have a lot of fear uh, like I used to. Um, in the past two months, all, my, all of my fear of pain and death has gone away. And I don't know if that's the bird's fault, but that's the only thing in my life that's changed majorly. So it's really the only thing I can attribute that to anything. So I just don't have a, hey, hey, you can't eat that. It's attached to my arm. If you have a lot of moles, the bird might try to remove them. What are we talking about? Do you remember? Sweet baby. So I've had to adapt the house a little bit to Lila. Birds don't really need to be on you all the time. And in fact, it's not really great for them to be on you all the time because, I mean, one, they're going to poop on you. Um, and two, it, it doesn't really allow the bird any independence. I have a stand that I built for her that I keep in the kitchen and it's on wheels. And I have one in my studio that's also on wheels. And so when she's not in her cage, she's either on one of those perches or on me or Caroline. So, yeah, I'm talking about you. When she's in the kitchen, it's really fun because we can feed her almost everything I'm cooking. And I'm a vegetarian, so is my wife. Um, and birds are mostly vegetarian. Oh, there's that bug again, Lila. Let's go see what kind of bug that is. Come on. Huh. Oh, that is definitely a wasp. Let's see what we're going to do. We're going to kill it. There's the wasp I killed. There's a lot of praise that has to go into doing things with a bird. When they do things you want, you gotta tell them that you are a good bird. Yes, you are. So for my subscribers who have been subscribed for a long time, you'll know how intensely scared of wasps that I am. I just killed that thing like it's nothing. I, I mean, seriously, like I, I'm not acting. That really happened. I, I'm just not afraid of them anymore. And I think it's attributed to how much this bird has brought my mood up. As a person who struggles with depression, I have to say that I've felt about 95% up for two months and it's it's amazing. And and uh, I think that's just the therapeutic nature of having a pet and you just watch them and they're just not afraid of shit. Like, Lila, yeah, she spooks at things, but she's not afraid of the things that I'm afraid of. Like, she's not afraid of death. She's not afraid of her mortality. She's really just afraid of not having enough food and enough water and me not being around. Those are the things she's scared of and that's beautiful. And those are, those are basically the only things I need to be scared of. Like there isn't a whole lot of things I should be scared of. Um, hey, that's attached to my arm, you goober. She might be hungry. That might be her giving me a sign that she's hungry for something and therefore she is trying to eat my moles. I, I don't see myself living without a bird again. I wanted a bird for a very long time. And then one day I was just like, why don't I do this? I've always wanted to do this. Why haven't I done this yet? And I realized that I don't really have to, you, people, I, I, I don't really have to wait on someone to give me permission to do something. I'm 28, I'm in charge of my life. And if I wanna do something, I can do something especially something as harmless as adopting 
a bird. My wife was on board. I'm on board. So we, so we, so we do it. And that really should be it for like every decision. And so this whole process has been really empowering. I don't know. I, I don't know if this video is going in the direction I thought it was going to go. This is turning into a motivational speech. I'm just, I'm so glad I did this. I'm so glad that I adopted. And that brings me to another point. Don't buy a bird from a pet store. Adopt a bird. There are tons of birds out there who need homes. Um, so find your local bird rescue and adopt a bird. For God's sake, don't buy a new one from a breeder. Adopt a bird. They're super sweet creatures that just want to be loved. Um, here I am sounding like a crazy person. I sound like, I sound like a crazy person. And see, Lila doesn't care. She's like, yeah, and? That's, that's one of the best parts about you is you just do not care that I sound like a crazy person. Lila's favorite foods are almonds, peas, and apples in that order. I think if you have the time to do so, you have the support from your community and people you live with, and you can afford their, oh, money. Let's talk about money. There are a couple of misconceptions that I was blown away aren't exactly the truth. Birds can be very expensive, but if they're not sick, they really don't have a lot of cost. An avian veterinarian, um, even one in my area, isn't that expensive per visit. In fact, going to the vet for Lila is less expensive than me going to the doctor. That's either a sign of our healthcare system failing or just a misconception about how expensive avian vets are. So that's pretty cool. So if she needs to go to the vet, we can afford it. And she doesn't eat all that much pellet. It's just one bird. Um, and I, I buy bags of pellet. I think they're 40 pound bags. And that'll probably last me for the rest of the year and then into 2018. That didn't cost me too much either because I thankfully am able to get it from, for wholesale. Man, but adoption fees themselves really aren't that much. Again, don't buy a parrot from a pet store. Adopt one. If for no other reason other than it's probably gonna be cheaper. Um, don't let money be the motivating factor in your decision either, because it really should be about the best bird for you. Um, Lila and I just bonded. Like when, when I went in to visit her at the rescue, none of the other birds really paid much attention to me, with the exception of Kanina, who is a lovebird, who by the way, Kanina, you are a jerk. Last time I cleaned your cage, you bit the crap out of me. I did not know that lovebirds could bite so hard. Oh my God. And, and Lila, I said hi to her, she said hi back. She wanted to see me. She came to the edge of her cage. I fed her some almonds. She didn't want me to leave. Um, I, yeah, it was one of those things where it's just like, that's the bird. So go visit a rescue. Go hang out with some birds. See if one of them is right for you. Talk to your people. See whether or not you have the time. See whether or not you have the money. And then understand that it's pretty much a lifelong commitment. So there's that. And it's gonna have its trials and tribulations. There are days when Lila doesn't want anything to do with me. Thankfully, today is not one of those days. Can I put some coconut oil on those feet? Huh? Bird friend. Bird friend. Yep, two months in, no regrets. Looking forward to the rest of this life with you. If you're interested in me doing a video on Caroline's perspective of all this, Caroline's my wife, leave me a comment down below. Let me know whether that's something you'd be interested in hearing about. I will see you on Wednesday for more shenanigans.